Okay. Hi, and welcome to the fourth episode of the Pandemic Pup. Today we are talking products that help with separation anxiety. Um, particularly, we're going to be talking a lot of toys, which is one of my fun things that I love talking about and playing with. Um, and we're here today with Sarah Davidson from, <laughs> from Concord Pets. Um, she is fantastic. I have to say I was a loyal, chewy customer, really, until I got to know Sarah, because <laughs> I love dealing with her. So it is totally worth um, going to Concord Pets and talking to her. She's been huge help to me in finding everything from uh, high value treats all the way to dog toys. So welcome, Sarah. Thank, Thank you, you for being here tonight. Um, so can you give us a little bit of your background? So, so I've been in the pet industry for 14 or 15 years now. Um, I, 10 years with Concord Pet. I spent four or five years with another company. Um, I am not a dog trainer. I am not a veterinarian. A lot of people think I am, and I'm not. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm just really here to help, and I'm really here to talk a little bit about the manufacturing side of it and kind of some of the cool stuff that's on the market that you guys might not have seen before and might just kind of pass by on a shelf. And when she says that, she is downplaying her knowledge immensely because um, anyone who's ever talked to her knows that she is a bundle of knowledge. Also extremely helpful on the nutrition side, which I always love. Um, <laughs> so if you guys have any comments, questions on that stuff, we've already talked and she will be happy to answer those. Yeah, um, yeah con let us know what your guys' favorite dog toy is. So comment with whatever your favorite toy is and we'll see. We'd love to know um, if Sarah carries it, any thoughts, anything similar. So we'd love to hear what your dog's like. So post it in the comments. Please, um, there's nothing I like more than talking about dog toys. So <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, it's a fun subject. So this has come up a lot during um, our previous interviews we've done for this. Um, toys are such an easy thing um, that can really help right now with dogs during this pandemic. So talk to us about what you're seeing with that and how you think they may help. Well, so I see a lot of customers and people out there i think we all we have these dogs we're home we're with them now for hours and hours and hours a day whereas we previously weren't the dogs are very confused about what's going on and they don't really understand why their people are home all the time um or i'm seeing a lot of kind of covid puppies where people are buying or um, adopting these dogs and they're home all the time with them but now the dogs are getting restless they're hitting that i like to call it like the bratty teenage phase <laughs> where you know that they're, they're just kind of naggy almost and a lot of these problems can kind of be mitigated by just stimulating them and doing some environmental enrichment with them that's great so i i know i always recommend playing at least having a con i'm a big fan of cons we've talked about well, that yeah uh, so um, why don't you go through some of the toys that you do recommend? I know we, so we got lucky enough, some of us to test a bunch of your products and we're going to reveal at the end what we loved the most. Um, also, I'll give you some of the results of my power chewer contest because um, I had all my guys go through it. So okay. let's start out with some of the toys that you find great for enrichment um, for the dogs right now. Definitely. Um, so this is like my go-to. You guys can see that. That's the Kong, the regular plain standard. It comes in pink, blue, or red or black. That's going to be the different hardness of the rubbers. So the red is the most common one. I'm going to lean back a little bit. Um, that's the one that most people buy. The blue and the pink ones are for puppies. That's going to be a softer rubber. And the black one is more for like your power chewers, like what you were saying. Um, but I love these toys because you can stuff them. They've got a hole in there and they've got a hole there. That hole is really important. Whenever you're buying a toy that's stuffable, make sure there's a hole on the opposite side. Otherwise, when the dog is licking, it can kind of create a vacuum and their tongue can get stuck. So that's really, really important, something to look out for when we're looking at these stuffable toys. But I like the Kongs a lot. They're safe for the most part. Um, do you hear every once in a while about a dog that had an issue with it? Yes, you do. Um, I had, in my previous life, I had Malinois, and my one dog destroyed it. 
he destroyed the Black Kong, which is like unheard of. <laughs> Took the top right off, right off. Um, but on the whole, they are a very good toy to recommend and to use with your dogs, especially your power chewers. That would be one that I would consider to be a power chewer toy, the Black Kong. It's rare that I hear of somebody whose dog has destroyed it. I have to say, my dogs haven't even destroyed that one. Yeah, it's very rare. I can think of maybe in the 15 years, 15-ish years that I've been doing this, maybe three times I've heard of the black one being destroyed. Which three out of 15 years, that's not too bad. I've sold hundreds and hundreds of these guys. Um, I also really like them because you can stuff them with a lot of different things. Now, about a week ago, I put up a question in the mainline pet in the your community. And I said, you know, what do you stuff your Kong with? What What is your number one thing that you like to stuff Kongs with? And overwhelmingly, some of you said, oh, I do kibble. Some of you said, oh, I do, you know, my canned food or, or whatever. A lot of you guys said that you use peanut butter and there is nothing wrong with that. That being said, um, there are other options. You should make the Kong something that's fun and exciting every single time you offer it to them. And part of that is rotating what you're filling with it. Um, one of the biggest issues I hear from customers with Kongs is that their dog is bored of it. They don't want it anymore. Make it new and fun and different every time, and that's not going to happen. Um, you know, you can use canned food to stuff with it. You can use yogurt. You can use kibble. A lot of I had a uh, one of the people on the forum said that she took kibble and she softened it with water and filled it. That's fine. I write. I do recommend freezing it. That's going to make it last longer um, and get weird with it. <laughs> you know, put some blueberries in there, put some fruit in there. Um, you know, blueberries are a great antioxidant, so are blackberries. So that's a way of incorporating some whole foods without necessarily changing the diet of the dog. Speaking of that, I, well, one, I just put together a full YouTube video on stuffing Kongs. Um, mm -hmm. I get asked so much about it. I know it even gets asked in, in the group a lot because we, are constantly posting the same picture. I know Sarah uh, Weber is constantly posting it as well. And I send it to so many of my clients, everything you can stuff with a Kong. So I made a video, it's being posted in the comments if anyone wants to check it out. But one of the things we were talking about, which I found really interesting is your blueberry spiel. <laughs> yeah. Um you know, I think a lot of times people have this in their head that they can't give their dog human food. Like that's a really, also I have a bird in the background. So if she's saying, hi, I'm sorry. That's, there's no way to shut her up. She's just going to talk and we just let her. <laughs> that's me too. Um, but, you know, I think people have it in their head. They're not supposed to give dogs human food, which is true for the most part. In general, you don't want to be giving them things like pizza and hamburgers and cheeses, like American cheese. I wouldn't recommend that. Cheddar, sometimes you can do it depending on the dog and their gut. Um, but your fruits and vegetables are really good additive. You can add carrots in there for fiber. Blueberries, blackberries, they're super high in antioxidants and it's a whole food source. So your dog's body is going to be able to break that down a little bit easier. Um, me and Kelly were talking a little earlier about, you know, a lot of dog food labels throw the word antioxidant on there. And very, very few of them actually have antioxidants in the final product. Um, you see these beautiful ingredient labels and and they don't always they're not always reflective of what is in there. Um, by the time that that food's gone through a, a high heat, an extrusion process, basically, um, a lot of that has been baked out. So just and it's not all companies. Some companies are very good with it. Some companies will have methods of of incorporating those, but it's very few that actually do. So I do recommend, on a personal note, incorporating those whole foods whenever you can. Um, Cause I mean, if you think about it, antioxidants, the moment they're ground up and they touch the air, they oxidize. So <laughs> it's kind of a marketing thing. <laughs> it is kind of funny how they marketed it, but um, I always use fresh foods of mine. Um, I certainly add some kibble just to give it a little bit more substance, um, but I love using all fresh foods. Yeah. Uh, other than I also really like to use baby food because it's super yep. easy. Um, so it's, that one's a big favorite of mine in, in the Kong stuffing. But check out the video. We're not going to spend too much time on that because there's a lot to talk that we can talk yeah, about. Yeah, I have about five boxes of product. I brought the store home so, <laughs> to show you guys what I was kind of talking about. So yeah, we were going to go into the, the store, <laughs> but, you know, the whole pandemic and the fact that I have technology breakdowns every day with this 
platform in doing this. So the last thing I needed to do was add in a mask and not know anything about what uh, I was worried. Well, I was, worried. I was yeah. gonna try to do it at the store, but I was worried that um we would have some customers interacting. Not that I, I love you guys, truly. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I have kind of a bird brain and I get distracted very easily. So <laughs> so give us some more of um, your product. The, like, yeah. Let's start first with this interactive, fun, plain product. Okay. Um, well, kind of in the same line as a Kong, I just wanted to talk real quick about Westpaw, if we can. Um, this one, I have. you can probably hear Minnie in the background. That's my dog. She's crunching on a... Um, buffalo ear at the moment but this is the West Paul Tux and as you can see I have it stuffed right in there that's a little sausage I've frozen this she loves them there's um, Greek yogurt in the bottom there's some blueberries there's a couple of her little treats that I tend to use um, freeze your toys and this one's super durable I love this one this one I would put the durability rating a little closer to like what the Red Kong is it's also shaped so they can hold it with their paws and really grind it on those back teeth, which is nice. Um, those back teeth are designed to break bone. They're designed to shred and to rip. Well, the front canines will shred and rip, but the back teeth will grind. Um, there's not much that can hold up to them. <laughs> so in that vein, I think you wanted to talk a little bit about the um, puzzle toys, right, from Outward Hound? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you tested one of these, right? Uh, my cousin Elizabeth did with her dog Millie. Um, we posted a video, uh, which I'm not sure if everyone got to see, but yes, she loved it. Okay. Uh, the one we yeah. tested was this guy, right? Yes. Okay, so that these are made by Outward Hound. They're Nina Audison design toys. And they have, if I can get this right on my camera, they have a cute little thing right about here. And that tells you the difficulty level. So this one's a stage two um they do stage one they do stage three and it's, it's all designed to help kind of some dogs take a little longer than others to figure out some puzzle toys so if you have one of those dogs who maybe is um a few crayons short of a pack maybe we start with rep with level one if you have a super smart dog then i would just stick, skip straight, straight to three and we also talked about they're not always a good um fit for certain dogs and we'll kind of talk about how to match the dog with the toy. Yes, you definitely uh, want to. Um, you know, if, if they get it on those back molars and they just chomp, it's gonna break. It's They're not designed for chewing. They're not designed for, um, you know, unsupervised play. You have to supervise them when you're using a puzzle toy. Or power chewers and really smart dogs that just say, forget it, I'm just gonna eat through everything so I can get mm -hmm. to the food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for your dogs that are thinky, they're wonderful. You know, right. if you have a dog who truly likes the challenge of thinking and figuring things out and figuring out how levers, how levers work, they're a great thing to maybe bring home and get your kids involved. You know, I think a lot of people, their kids aren't super involved with their dogs and they should be, even if they're like four or five years old, get them involved with the toys and showing the dog. And it teaches them how to behave around a dog as well. You know, maybe you don't go sticking your fingers in the dog's mouth when it's trying to eat, um, you know, but you do want to consult with a behaviorist or a um, trainer. If you have a dog who has aggression issues, that is very, very important. So what else do you have as far as some of our more interactive or dog feeding toys? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Kong has really kind of been an industry leader, and I'm sorry if I'm ducking out of the video. I just am leaning over to grab some stuff. Um, Kong has been kind of a leader recently with, they're coming out with a lot of really cool puzzle toys. Um, and they're coming out with some that are a little more durable. Like these guys, I would consider to be not super durable. They have a lot of levers. They have a lot of parts going through them. Not a bad toy by any means, but it is something that, um, you know, if you do have that power chewer, you maybe want to stay away from. <laughs> they do, however, make these guys, which are kind of cool. So this is the tilt spool, and it just slides open like that. And you put your kibble in, and it screws back together, and it's weighted on the bottom. So consider this as like a slow feed hole. Hey, Sarah, tell that boy from watching the movies upstairs to turn off the streaming because I think he's eating some of your video. Oh. Am I um, <laughs> You're getting sorry. a little pixelated. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
It was a little hard to see that last. Um, you're good now, but it was a little hard to see the last product. Can you show the last two again? Sure can. So this is the tilt spool made by Kong. And you can just unscrew it like that. And it's designed to put your food in there and it's a weighted bottom. So the dog has to tip it in order to get their food out. Like that. Definitely better. That's something that we like. I'm also a big fan of these guys. Maybe move a little slower too. Okay, sorry, I talk fast, guys. Um, no, no, just for the pictures, it, it like zooms in, it captures it all of a sudden. Does it? Oh my gosh. Um, this guy's a fun one. This is the Kong tennis ball. I use this for Minnie all the time. She loves it. Now, something to remember with these guys, they are noisy, especially if you have hard floors which I do. Um, so not something that you want to be playing with if you want silence. <laughs> but if you want something, if you're looking for a way to slow down your dog's eating, if you're looking for a way to feed in a different way than a bowl, I'm a big fan of the ditz the bowl movement. Um, you know, I, I do think that if you have a dog who's bored or, you know, maybe is kind of getting into some trouble around the house, feeding them through a toy is a great way to engage their mind and to maybe kind of help stop some of those problems before they happen. So we tried this guy, mm -hmm. uh, the Kong, what is it, Wubbler? Mm -hmm. We personally liked it. It did have some um, disadvantages, one being the noise. However, it would be a great outdoor toy. Um, but I was really excited about this one because it was the first time, first toy in a while that and a toy toy, not a bone, because that's different, that my um, old man Pitbull got very excited for. So he loved this. Um, yeah. And I, I'm, I'll i post a video of it. I couldn't pull it up for, right now with this, but um, we were really excited about that one. He also liked this one right here. Mm -hmm. so that one's a little quieter, especially if you're on carpeting. That one works really, really well for carpeting. Yes, because it's glide. It isn't as loud. And mm -hmm. I'll go through um, some of my pros and cons for these um, after, as well as we're going to go over our top recommendations. But yeah. um, we're talking Kongs. I thought I'd share that. So go yeah. ahead. All right, I didn't mean this, to... You're good. Um, the boo, the <laughs> wobbler that you had in this guy. Another reason I love them. They don't go under the couch. So we all have that stash of toys. <laughs> you know, there's like 50 toys under your couch and you can't find them until you clean. And then you have this moment of realization that you've bought your dog all these toys. <laughs> and it's um, really bad when they were stuffed with food. That's the worst. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a fun cleanup. <laughs> it also are toys that, you don't have to. that are, can get obsessive. I have one that is a little, um, I'm not sure exactly the word for it. She goes a little nuts around balls. It's not a little reactive, but um, enjoys it thoroughly. And when a ball goes under my couch, she does whatever she can to get to it. And so, and this is actually my sister's dog. So it's her fault kind of thing. Um, but it eats the bottom of my couch. Um, so luckily, uh, you know, I, do know someone at Invisible Fence, so I could do, take care of that. Do you have the hookup? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hookups are good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a ton of products on the market nowadays. If, you know, I don't have time to cover all of the toys that are designed for slow feeding or for treat releasing. Um, there's a ton of them on the market now. So if you're in my area, stop in and I'll be happy to show you kind of what we carry and what all is there. Um, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Pet Safe. They make one of my favorite toys as well, which I'll lean back. This is the Tugga Jug. Um, you can fill it up with your kibble, and the dog has to learn to thread the rope through this, thread the rope through this piece in order to get it to release. So that's fun too. And they like to drag it by the rope and clang it everywhere. <laughs> that is another one of um, the ones that we love a lot at my house. Yeah. And yeah. also, too big to fit under a couch. <laughs> Correct. You're seeing a theme here. Yes. Um, hey, it's got to work for you guys, too. Like, if the toy doesn't work for the dog, and if it definitely doesn't work for you, it's not going to make it. So, um, okay. So, <laughs> so um, what we talked a little bit about um, the fact that I tested a bunch of these toys and so did my cousin. We kind of had 
completely different views on the toys and what was important to us. So um, I was hoping you could talk a little bit about how to match what you're looking for, the right dog for the right toy. Definitely. Um, um, so it's actually one of the most common questions that we see and we'll see it inevitably every couple days or so we'll have someone who comes in with this. <laughs> Do we know what this is? <laughs> Do we know? Um, yeah, right? They'll come in and they kind of look at us and like, oh my God, my dog ripped up this toy in three seconds. And that's really common. You're not alone. <laughs> And so I get a lot of, of customers who, who ask me, they say, why do you carry these toys if they're so easily destroyable? And like, I have a couple here and I'm not going to pick out names too much, but like ones that are like this, it's pretty easy to rip up. They're not really, they're not double stitched. They're not made with fabric that is designed to be torn at or shredded. It's more of like a lovey toy. It's something, it's a cuddle toy. It's something for your dog to love on. Not all dogs do that. Um, some dogs, like you had mentioned your power chewers, um, they will look at that as a fun thing to kill and it will be killed in about 30 seconds, but they will have the best 30 seconds of their life destroying it <laughs> and spreading it everywhere in your house. There are other toys that kind of any type of plushy toy, they're going to be a little softer. Um, there, it is getting better. There are some manufacturers who are thinking a little bit tougher, like, um, Hoggle Hounds. You can see this cute little dude here. He's a lamb. He's adorable. But I ripped him open. <laughs> and the reason I ripped him open is because I just wanted to show you real quick. It's got several layers kind of stitched in. And I don't know if you guys can kind of see that mesh right there. So what they do is they actually stitch a whole toy out of mesh. And then they put a covering on it. Um, is it indestructible? No. Absolutely not. Nothing is. Um, but it is a little bit tougher than some of the other plushies on the market. So I would consider that like a medium grade toy. You know, different dogs have different needs. Some dogs just want to rip and shred. Some dogs prefer chewing on something like a rubber, like a hard power chew. And some dogs just want to have something to cuddle with and kind of lay with and groom every once in a while and play with. We also talked about it's really kind of situational. Um, so when you're looking for a toy, know what you want in it. Um, for example, I was saying a lot of people right now, when they're working from home, their kids are doing school online from home. It, you don't want a loud toy or something that's going to get your dog hyped up. You want something more calming or that's going to entertain them and he's going to be quiet. So know your dog and how they're going to react. When I gave my dog the Kong wobble, it was loud and he was having a blast, but there's no way anyone who was close by would have been able to, to work. The kids would have been woken up. So it's not a perfect situation for that. However, he can have it outside. He can have it when we're playing around, um, but it wasn't the right toy for the right situation. Right, so you really have to think that. when you're in the store and you're looking at these, these toys, think critically about what your, your need is and think critically about what you want that particular toy to do. Um, so like, we'll just point out this jolly ball. A lot of horse people know this. Um, you know, they make a dog line as well. This is not something I would necessarily play with indoors because it's going to hit your bookshelves. It's going to hit your TV. It's going to hit everything. The dog's going to think it's great. It's a blast. They're going to toss it right at you. Um, but it, it might, you know, destroy your house. <laughs> so this is more of an outdoor toy. I would say I wouldn't, Unless you have a dog who's really good with it, I wouldn't put this inside. I would put this outside where they can have a ball and roll around with it and pounce on it. And I have to say, they make lots of great toys. They actually make my overall favorite toy for outside, the tug it, tug a jug. Or uh, mm -hmm. rock and roll, I'm sorry. The romp and roll. I love that yeah. one. Yeah, they uh, make a lot of really cool. We just got a shipment in, too, so check us out. <laughs> Um, so what other toys, um, do you have going on right now that you would recommend? Well, I mentioned Westfall a little bit. I'm a big fan of theirs. Um, I think I, you had tested a Quizzle as well. That That's one, you would show that if you have it. I don't have it with me. I'm sorry. Um, 
think you had a video of it or something. I have a video and I have brought one in here, Katie. Have you, can you find that one? The bully stick one? But the quizzle is cool. It's something you can, uh, most people use bully sticks. And um, if you don't know what a bully stick is, Google it. Um, <laughs> but you can stuff it in there and it, it's something that will make it last a little longer. It also helps prevent them from getting that end. You know, a lot of times people are very worried about their dogs eating the bully stick all the way to the end. Um, there it is. So there we go. Um, mine still ha actually has some bully stick in it. Um, which is amazing because I actually timed these with my dog. Um, he got through the bully stick alone in 15 minutes or 30 minutes. Um, with this, it, it doubled the time. And then I said, what can I do to make it last even longer? And I shoved some peanut butter and banana in there um, all around the bully stick and froze it. And that's why this is still in here right now. Yeah. Those guys are great too. They're, they're a nice company and they're actually based out of Montana. So they're all US made, which is really cool. Um, they all float, they're dishwasher safe. So you can just pop that in the top rack whenever you wanna clean it. Um, they work really well. So I like I like toys that kind of make dogs think and I like toys that make things last. You know, bully sticks are not cheap. You're spending $8 to $10, depending on the brand you get, sometimes even more on something your dog some of my customers say five minutes, 10 minutes, maybe if it's a power chewer. So anything you can kind of use to make that last a little bit longer. Um, and it doesn't just have to be bully sticks that you jam in there. I, you said you put some banana in there. I've seen people put bana just banana in there. There's two little holes on each side, just stuff it in and freeze it. Um, I've seen people do dental treats that you can stuff in there. So really it's anything that you can fit. <laughs> That's safe. To um, Speaking, so what what else do you have in there to show us? Oh my gosh, what don't I have? Um, so talk a little bit about shoes, I guess, if you're okay with that. Um, yeah. And I kind of wanted to start out with a familiar brand, one that we have not talked too much about. <laughs> <laughs> um, these are kind of cool. So these are the marathon shoes. And they actually, I don't know if you can kind of see that, but they plug into the bottom of the call. So you can stuff your, this is another way of making it last a lot longer. Whatever you're putting in there, pop one of these on the end, it plugs it up and then you can freeze it. And then your dog has to chew all around this thing before they can get to what's in your Kong. So that's kind of a cool product. Um, there's been a lot of discussion. I saw kind of in the forum, you guys were talking about elk antlers, which I thought was very interesting. Um, you know, it's definitely one of those, I love them or I hate them type deals it again it depends on the dog if you have a dog who's going to sit there and chew on it for hours and hours and hours maybe don't do that it might be too hard of a chew for those teeth to be able to hold up to um but i do have customers who use them and they love them and they work well so i do recommend doing the split antlers though that way they can get the marrow out and it is a little bit easier on the teeth um so again. i personally like those because once i'm done i will take them and soak them in some chicken broth, mm -hmm. put them in for a little bit and give them right back out to them. It yep. kind of revitalizes them that way. It does. Um, and again, take these suggestions. You got to put it in context for your own personal dog. Uh, it's something I say every single day is your dog's its own person. Mm -hmm. You know, it's every dog you can have. I, I had two dogs that were the same exact breed from the same breeder, from the same bloodlines two very different dogs <laughs> you know my male was that power chewer he, he chewed everything under the sun so like when i have a customer who comes in with this i feel you because <laughs> he, he's done that. my girl was very lovey she groomed her toys she babied them she really enjoyed carrying them around she'd sleep with them sometimes it's just kind of roll of the dice with your animals you don't really know what you're getting um so kind of take these suggestions and and think critically about them when it comes to your own personal dog, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Along that lines, Benabone. Mm -hmm. I like Benabone. I like mm -hmm. the way they're shaped. Um, there was a whole thing a couple of years ago um, about the Benabone shape. There were dogs that were getting their jaw stuck in there. They actually listened and they changed the shape so that that can't happen anymore which is nice. I like when I see a manufacturer kind of listen to consumers. And I really like when a manufacturer admits and owns up to, yeah, 
we made a mistake. Let's fix it. Let's go forward and let's fix this. Um, so when you're looking at your toys, definitely check out who's making them and definitely check out to see if there's any, any recalls and if they took any action about that. It's not just if there was a recall, but look to see if they took any action on it. Mm -hmm. um, so for what that's worth, but yeah. I like these. they're along the same lines, just like your Nyla bone. Um, my biggest reason I like them is the shape. They're curved and the dog can really hold them in that paw and get it on those back teeth. So, and get that chewing aggression out for what that's worth. Um, let's see, what else do I have in my fun little bag? What about for, um, dogs that love balls? Yeah, I knew you were going to ask that. Let me find where I put my holy roller. Here it is. Holy roller. This one's a small, this is like a medium size. I like this, especially if you have a dog who likes tennis balls. So I don't know if you guys know this, but tennis balls are incredibly abrasive to dogs' teeth. It's that material. I've seen it a lot where dogs will come in and their, their canines are kind of worn from playing with tennis balls so much. A lot of dogs are very ball aggressive. Yes, my dog is over there now. <laughs> um, and so I like to put them in this. And that rubber cage kind of protects it from being skinned, which is nice. I also like to put your dental chews in here, like the Whimsies toy dental chews fit really, really well in these. Um, you can put your bones like this, which I'm about to give to my dog so that she leaves me alone. <laughs> um, you know, you can give, you can put a lot of different things in these cow ear, pig ear, um, buffalo ear, anything that you can fit pretty much. And then the dog has a cage around it and they have to figure out how to work it out of that cage. So again, something to be supervised. You don't want them because then they could get their paw stuck. Um, with most of these, I would highly recommend supervising them. So you're in the room, you're on your laptop or something like that. Dog is in the same room with you type of a deal where if anything were to happen, you are there and you can take care of it. That's what we tried this guy. Same company. So, same company. Um, it was kind of cool. You got to put your treats in here. Yep. So that uh, is this, but it has a, um, a plastic insert on the inside that holds treats. Yeah, so the, the ball inside flips around, goes up and down. The treats come out. Um, I actually, it held up rather well for us. Um, Everything considered, however, I mean, my dogs go through food really quickly. Yeah. Uh, so they knocked it all out rather quickly. And um, but the fact that it's still in one piece, I can tell you, though, if I left this alone at my house while I was not home, it would not it would be destroyed. Yeah. So know that, you know, know your dog again. Like there was saying, um, if they enjoy something and, you know, they're going to destroy it. Take it away when they're done before and don't leave them around. I, in general, from a training perspective, don't love going into people's homes and finding their dog toys all over the house. Yeah. It, to me, it's like that. That means you're, those toys are nothing special to your dog. It's kind of like mm -hmm. your spoiled brat kid going back to the kids scenario. I was actually just talking to someone today about that. You know, she, she just she was so excited. She just got a new puppy. Beautiful dog. Absolutely gorgeous dog. Um, and she's buying some chews, as most people who have puppies do, because they're like little sharks. They chew on everything, including you and your woodwork and everything else around. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we had been talking about was pull up your chews. Don't just leave them scattered about your house, because if you just leave them scattered about, dog's going to chew on it for five minutes and then I'm bored. What's next? Pull them up. And that way you have a reserve in your cabinet or wherever you stash your chews so that every time you give it to them it's something new you know even if it's half chewed to death <laughs> so um one of the other things so that we i know that we wanted to talk about since it's asked all the time and um we are getting a bunch of questions so i do want to get okay. to those as well um but can you go over the difference between rawhide What's yes. why people talk about it so much and give it I will. So yeah. in general, I tend to veer away from rawhide. It is a personal decision. Um, nothing against the rawhide industry. That is certainly a big booming industry. It's been around for many, many years. For my animals, I do not find that that is something that I want to give to them. Um, that's It's a personal decision. I do sell it. 
but I don't tend to recommend it. And part of the reason I don't tend to recommend it is because it's not digestible. Rawhide's actually not considered to be a food product. A lot of people are shocked when I tell them that. It's considered to be a chew. And in the pet industry, that that doesn't, it's not really overseen the same way that something that is digested and broken down in the gut would be seen. Um, I have seen a lot of customers whose dogs choke on them and who will swallow a big hunk of it. And that that can be kind of a problem sometimes. You're going you're gonna to wind up with a pretty decent sized vet bill um, if they swallow it whole and it gets stuck in the gut. Again, I'm speaking extremely generally. I do have people who use rawhide. They chew it up into little tiny pieces and the dog's great. And the dog's been using it for years and years and years. Just for my animals, I don't tend to recommend it. And I don't tend to recommend it to customers. I'm too worried about the choking hazard and the getting stuck in the gut hazard. Especially if you have a puppy who usually has a bigger appetite than they do brains. <laughs> <laughs> um, luckily, there are several options on the market that are rawhide-like um, that can kind of fulfill that need. So I actually brought a couple here. So one of them is Earth Animal. We all know no hide. That was one of the first on the market. They It's brown rice flour, basically. They treat it with bromelain and... Um, couple other things to toughen it up eggs olive oil and they make like this big dough and they roll it out they slather it up with meat they roll it up and then they dry it and so that's what this is it does break down fairly easily in the digestive tract same thing with the canine naturals hide free very similar product um they do not last as long as a rawhide nothing will because rawhides aren't technically food so they don't need to adhere to the same breaking down um necessity that items like this that are considered as a food item need to adhere to. So I would recommend going with something else on a personal note, if you can, there's so many options on the market nowadays. So what um, we knew it was coming up, we tried to kind of address it in the beginning, but the best foods to put in your toys, can you use things out of your fridge and your cabinet? Now we addressed a lot of that, but um, since my days and even little Zoom calls all mixed into one, did we talk about toppers? We did not, not yet. All right. So getting back into, you know, you can even take a bone like this, which I've unwrapped in case my dog Minnie decides that she wants to be bad, but she's been good. She's sleeping on the couch right now. Um, you know, this is your standard filled bone. This one's the bark or these one. It's filled with pumpkin. Um, I love stuffing toys and finding fun things to stuff inside your bones, inside your toys. Um, yes, you can use stuff from your cabinet, but you don't want to be using anything pro overly processed. And you want to make sure that it's safe for dogs. Like I wouldn't go taking grapes and putting them into a Kong because grapes are poisonous to dogs. Um, I would, however, use, I use quite often Greek yogurt. You know, that's something that you can layer in there. You can use a little bit of peanut butter, just peanut butter is super high fat. So be careful with that. Um, carrots, carrots are a super nice source of, um, fiber and beta carotene. Same thing with your sweet potatoes. You can nuke that in the microwave, scoop out the middle and put that in baby food. Um, sky's really the limit. I've done green beans, especially for those dogs that might be a little chunky and might need to lose a couple pounds. Your, your vegetables are really kind of in your wheelhouse there. Cause you're adding a ton of fiber. It's just going to make them feel a little fuller, um, without necessarily adding a ton of calorie to that. I always recommend too, if you have a dog that's special needs, talk to your vet and just see what they recommend. You know, a lot of your veterinarians are very, very knowledgeable on this type of stuff. It's just that they're not asked a whole lot. So. And you can always use their prescription diet in the food as well. You sure can. Um, I canned food. I'm a big fan of using canned food in these guys. You know, this one's starting to melt, but like, stop it. It's not, you just take a spoon and throw it in there and freeze it. Um, and canned food you can take the dry food and soften it up with some water a little warm water let it sit for 15 minutes that'll make like a mush that you can stuff in there you can layer it like i said get weird with it it's um, it's fun it's it's it actually once you get into the habit of doing it it's a lot more fun than you think it would be for both you and them <laughs> um are there better toys for different age ranges Yes. So when you have a baby, a puppy that doesn't have its adult teeth, it still has its milk teeth in, I wouldn't go with anything super hard. 
And the reason I say that is when you go with something super hard, it you can chip those those canines and you, you want to avoid chipping it. Yes, they're going to lose their teeth eventually, but you don't want to be causing them any pain. Um, so try to avoid things that are super duper hard. Um, I actually like a couple ears. Like I like the Honey I'm Home, which I just gave to Minnie, unfortunately. Um, honey I'm Home makes um, some buffalo ears that are coated in honey. Love those because they're sweet. So the dogs like them. And usually with your puppies, they'll, you'll get a good amount of chew on them. Now, once they start losing those teeth and they start getting a little bit more chewy, you're going to go and graduate into something a little bit harder. Um, you know, something that maybe has a little more substance to it that they can really gnaw on because they're, they're like babies. They're, they're going to, if they can fit it in their mouth, they're going to chew on it. <laughs> um, we'll answer one or two more then, um, people can, can, you can keep submitting your questions. Uh, we'll come back to them, but I wanted to go ahead and, uh, announce the results of our test, um, that we did and our top choices. But um, another uh, question that was asked a little bit um, quite often was, are natural dog toys better? It depends on what your term natural. So I knew somebody was going to ask this. <laughs> Here it is. So would you consider this to be natural? This is leather, it's wool, there's no dye in it. It's actually a great toy. Um, it's an all natural toy. Now, would I consider this to be better than something like this, which has some dyes on it and has some fun little rope feet and crinkles? Not necessarily. Again, it, it depends on what you're comfortable with. Um, you know, unfortunately, I think the reason most people don't wanna use dyes is because they're worried about it being toxic. But dog toys tend to go through a pretty standard testing process. And you can even see on some of the labels, which I'll show you right here, like this the JW is something that's obviously dyed. But if you look at the label right there, it says certified non-toxic. So a lot of these toys are doing the testing protocols that you would hope that they would do. Um, now, I wouldn't go and get toys where if you touch it, the dye is coming off. I, I don't tend to sell any of those. Um, I don't like those toys there are they are out there they're like a dollar a piece or 50 cents a piece and you can probably imagine the types of stores that sell those and that's fine it's just not in my wheelhouse um i tend to go with brands that are a little more tried and true and tested and so i personally do not have a problem going with with dyed toys but if you don't want to go that way if you want to go with something that's 100 percent natural i do have those options as well oh perfect so I'm going to announce some of our um, test toy winners and please um, give us uh, so <laughs> I mean, some of them we've talked about. I think there's a couple we didn't, um, but the first one, and I'm going to see if I can do. Is the dog tornado. Um, Millie used this and, uh, she loved it. Um, a couple of videos were posted on, uh, our channel and our, in our group. Um, Millie is a four or five month old, um, rescue mix lab type mix, um, who immediately picked it up. Um, I thought it was cool after, um, watching some of the videos and talking with my cousin that the kids loved it as well. And they were so into getting this set up and if Millie was going to get it or not. So it had a lot of fun for everybody. So I definitely recommend them. This was a level two. Again, as Sarah said, there's multiple different levels in these. Um, she is still not quite getting the white cover up part on top, but um, she'll get there and you don't need it. Um, she, one of her cons on the product was that she's pretty sure those white things are going to be lost by her kids really quickly. And I would be having the same one as well. She said it stood, it stayed in place. Great for her to play with, which she was kind of surprised about. So, um, she gave it 
great reviews. Again, this was a product I personally didn't test out. I watched it. Um, I would certainly recommend it for certain types of dogs. Um, again, you need to kind of match the dog toy that's going to work well with the dog. That personally wouldn't work for my dogs. Um, they do not have those brains, I guess, which is, I feel really bad saying that next to Buka's right here. But um, he, they're more chewers. Um, they like games where they don't think it's a game that they just eat the toy. So, uh, but this um, was in our top dog toys. So if you have a dog that is great with learning, hunting, um, a little bit more on the gentle side, great toy. Um, and I'm going to, Sarah, you are in uh, gone mode. So I'm going to put you back here. Um, second. And now you are back. Hello. This is what she's talking about. Yep. Oh, sorry. You can't see my pictures going up, but I had a picture up the I whole can't. time. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that was in our top uh, picks. And going on to uh, my next top pick, which is, oh, I can do three. So um, that is the West Paul. Again, um, the Qui Quizzo, I think it was called. Quizzle. Quizzle. Okay. Um, and I like this for all the dogs. I talk with a lot of owners who love bully sticks for their dogs. Their dogs love the bully sticks. This was great because it, it really, uh, in the end, has almost quadrupled the time it takes for my dog to go through a bully stick. Um, again, I tested it. I did 30 minutes uh, was him without it. And he's now on um, several hours with this one. He's showing it right next to me, actually. And is your dog, is this the power chewer? This is um, the power chewer. I have two power chewers. One is just more focused on bones. And the other one's just power chewer when it comes to anything they can eat. Yeah. Um, so this was great. Uh, for those of you who have dogs that love bully sticks, it really has, it takes it, it makes it last a long, lot longer. I did need to freeze it before I got a lot of time more, but in freezing it, it works really well. So that was another one. And on to number three. And actually, before I go there, I will show you this is him eating it earlier today. That was pre-banana and peanut butter, which I froze it with. So we got that. Um, now the next one um, is my favorite outdoor toy. And sorry, that's my son. He's so cute. I had to keep him in there. Um, <laughs> it is the Jolly Pet Romp and Roll. I have to say, um, this was not a new try for me uh, because it, I have known and I kind of won't waver, but the Jolly Pet Romp and Roll. It's a great toy. Um, it was, uh, and I, I recommend it to any of my clients whose dogs like balls because it's non deflatable. These things last me longer than any other type of toy other than bones um, or Kongs, but they have so much fun with them. The kids have fun playing with the dogs with them. The dogs can play with each other, which is really nice. There's not a lot of toys that they can actually play with each other with. Um, so they love doing that. Um, it bounces, it just lasts forever. The worst my dogs have really gotten is they've gotten the rope out and then they still play with the ball and bat it around. So they're extremely long lasting. I love them. I did notice in your store, however, that there is a company that makes something that looks very similar, but mm -hmm. it's made with water. I don't know if you have any feedback on those. Um, they're good. So the idea is that you put water in it and it weights it down. So I would definitely say that's more of a summer toy because in the winter that water is going to freeze. That's kind of what I That's thought. my only thing. And it's a different material than the Jolly Ball. The Jolly Ball is a little bit more of like a like a rubbery plastic, whereas that one is like hard plastic shell. And I, I did see so. someone make a comment. I just wanted to let everyone know all the toys that we tested um, are available at Concord Pets. That's where they came from. Um, 
So you can purchase them all there. But yes, any of the products that we're talking about, you can buy there. We're on Instacart now too. So if you don't want to come out, you can shop us through there. Perfect. Thank you for sharing that. And they are now doing delivery, right? Yes. So through Instacart, or you can go on our website at ConcordPetFoods.com. We do have some items on there that are available. Um, or if you're within, I think, five miles of my store, I'll, del- I'll bring it out to you myself. So. Oh, you're the best. I try. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's, uh, that rock and roll, again, they make other great products. Um, there's a bunch that are really great for as far as enrichment in general. That's why the, they have it for the horses as well huge balls they can chase. They're great for like herding dogs um, to get some of that energy out. Uh, So I love that brand um, a lot. They also make, sorry to kind of steal, but this is one of my favorite ones that they make. We like the egg. The egg is great. It is a hard plastic, but you can, its shape is made so the dog can't get on those back teeth. So they really just kind of chase it around the yard and get super frustrated trying to get it. Um, the next one I go back and forth about, um, but we have the lickety mat. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason why it is up here, my cousin, particularly, this is her dog, Millie. She absolutely loved this. Um, my cousin loved it for many different reasons. She said it was super easy. The dog loved it. it was, she found it easy to clean. Um, and because it's so um, small and, and foldable, you can take it with you. It, it goes away easy. So she, it was her their favorite toy that they went through. Um, personally, my dogs all love it as well. Um, so as far as dog ranking, it sits way up there among all the dogs. I, however, cannot stand cleaning. And I, um, it's one of my cons on it. Uh, I think it's really gross. And if you, if the dog didn't get everything out of there and it's not done yeah. right away, it can get really hard to get out. And you gave some tips on that because we were talking. I about- did. So the licky mats are one of those things where people, again, different needs for different dogs. I recommend them a lot for anxiety dogs. So I recommend them a lot. If you have any dogs that are like chronically licking, like they, I've seen them where the dogs will lick their paws just constantly sometimes that's an insensitivity or an allergy to something sometimes it's an anxiety response though and for those dogs that have like a true anxiety response these guys are lifesavers you can redirect that behavior so instead of it licking its paw you put a little food or some something smushable bananas whatever you'd like on there and you put it on there and that way the dog starts self-soothing with it um it is a little bit messy because of the nature of it which i'm gonna try to put this right up so that you guys can see it hopefully so you see all those little crosses and there's different types this is just one of the types that we carry um they kind of hold on to food which as the dog licks it, it's a nice texture against its tongue and that's what's causing it to self-soothe that being said it is a bear to clean <laughs> um so they are dishwasher safe it's made out of silicone So you can put it in your top rack. If that's still not doing it for you and the food is still stuck in there, get a potato scrubber and just scrub it in your sink with that potato scrubber and it should take it off. My other thing, which again, I said a little bit of a different category, but it's certainly not for power chewers. No, no, not at all. If they get it on those back, they will rip it. They will shred it. It is not... For a power chewer, it is not meant to be chewed because that's not what really what its purpose is. When we're right. looking at these toys, you really have to kind of, again, think it will break, it will shred. Um, it is really just meant to be a nice mat that they can lick. So. I saw some countdown. I don't know what that was. But um, so the other one that we had, uh, my top hit is, and my dog's already moved it. <laughs> must be popular yeah the classic Kong mm-hmm. you can't go wrong with these I recommend them all over the place um, uh, having power chewers these are the only toys that I can truly say last um, so this is my number one I can't I didn't wave at all given all the new products out there I'm sticking with it the black Kong which I don't have in here is really 
by far my best uh, choice. Yes. So it that, is by far probably one of the most popular toys that we sell. Probably for that reason, many, many dog trainers. I've yet to come across a dog trainer that says, I hate Kong. Yeah. <laughs> there's a reason for that. They do a lot of testing. They do, they do a lot of product um, research. And they're one of those brands that they're very innovative. But the classic Kong, even with all their innovation, that classic beehive Kong is still, that's the number one thing I ask people when they come in and they say, I just got a puppy or I just adopted a dog or I just bought a dog is, do you have a Kong? You're going to want a Kong. You're going to want to get one. It, it's a must have in every person's toy collection for their dog. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. So that, that one, number one. And I am also going to share with you all my power chewer test. I'm going to hide you there for a second. So uh, we tested many different products, and I'm just going to share the results with this. This is my everlasting treat ball. So that did not work out so well. Um, it is not everlasting as it claims. It's actually barely lasting. However, again, I have a power chewer. This is not your average dog. This does great for a lot of dogs, I know, um, but it is not on the power chewer list. As you can see, neither is the topple. Um, so that the dogs could just get right under that rim and chomp it right off. These are really great um, for my other dogs that aren't necessarily um, power chewers. Mm -hmm. So these uh, worked great. They're easy to stuff. Um, and I really like that. And they were not quite as messy just because of the way you stuff them. So these were a great one as well. However, they did not stand up in the power chewing contest. I will throw in a little thing here. If you contact Westpaw, they have a form on their website. Contact them. They're going to ask you to ship that topple back and they'll send you a free one or a free toy of equal value. Yeah, we don't guarantee toys um, for obvious reasons because this happens a lot, um, which is part of why I'm here and why I wanted to talk to you guys so much is to talk a little bit about toys and to kind of discuss, you know, let's look at these toys. Not every toy is going to be indestructible, unfortunately. But if you do have a dog that destroys a toy, try contacting the manufacturer. You'd be surprised at how many of them are willing to work with you. And um, so the winners were, again, the classic comms. Um, I don't have the black one here, but, but if I can put this up here, those little teeth marks are about the only thing that's happened to it. Um, and that is with my pit bull, my 185 pound mastiff and the ball free collie. Um, so it, they both outstand. I have yet to have to purchase another one. I mean, I wash them regularly. That was a question. I we're totally running out of time, but let's see what we can get to. One of the questions we did have come in was how do I wash my dog toys? What's the safest method? I'm sorry. What was that? How do I wash my dog toys? And what is the safest method? Okay. So it depends on the dog toy. Plush toys, I would just spot clean um, for the most part, unless it's like something that's unstuffed, in which case you can wash it and kind of hang it to dry. Um, your Kong toys, your Westfall toys, really any of your rubber toys, your heavy duty guys, pop those in your top rack of your dishwasher and just run the cycle. Um, that should clean it out. If it doesn't get all the gunk out from the inside, take a toothbrush and just kind of scrub the inside of it. And that should really do a good job at getting that, especially with your Kong toys, because they are beehive shaped. So there's a little concave on the inside. Toothbrush does a really good job at getting that out, anything that might be stuck in there. Um, for the most part, though, you can also soak them in more water, and that should help get it to release. I've, I've personally found um, old baby bottle washers mm -hmm. work great. You can also I really like that. Yeah. Um, I have a feeling it's going to cut us off soon, but one next week is Sarah Weber with Furry Elite Canine. Um, she's talking about how to capture calmness, and we also have – Amy Beth Clark of Animal, who does Animal Reiki with us. So we'll be talking about calming next week. I'm very excited. Um, Sarah's 
got a huge wealth of knowledge as everyone in our group knows. So we're excited to have her on. Um, one, and we're gonna put contact info for Sarah in the comments so you guys can reach that. Yes, uh, put all your questions in there and I'll do my best to try to respond. Perfect. My contact info will be in there as well if you guys have any questions on that. Um, but we'll get to, uh, this is letting me go still, so we'll see. Um, a question we had was, should you always freeze when stuffing or is it just to last longer? It's really just to make it last longer. Um, you don't have to freeze. There's no hard and fast rule that says if you're stuffing this toy, you must freeze it. Um, you know, really, if, if you don't have time, just honestly stuffing that and put your, your treats and whatnot in there. And that's going to be better than giving them nothing at all. You know, but if you have yeah, time to freeze it, you absolutely should because it does make it last a lot longer. But you don't yeah. have to. Um, and then we had the dog tornado. Will that work for a super chewer six month old active lab? We kind of covered that. I'm not sure. Depends how much they think. Um, but Sarah, if you have some additional input into that. If they're going to chew on it, no. <laughs> But if you can sit there and take that six month old lab and show them how to work it, they're not instant, like they're not automatically going to go to chewing that they might automatically start flipping levers and start moving the parts of the toy that are supposed to move. Then that might be worth a shot. But I wouldn't if you're worried about them getting on those back teeth and cracking it, I would maybe wait a little bit till they calm down. And there's also great um, videos out there for games without some of the toys. This I personally, a lot of these toys, I like them for when I'm not there. But if you wanted to ch try something with your dog while you're home, you know, you could take some uh, kibble and hide it in different places. Yes. Um, you guys should look up, uh, what is it, snuggle mats? Snuggle mats. No, um, that totally freaks me out, but um, it can depends on the dog again. If they're gonna rip and shred and play with it like it's a stuffed dog, maybe not. But again, for those dogs that like to kind of hunt and root around, that might be something to consider. And you can make them pretty easily, yeah. It's the drool that uh, coming from my mastiff that's the last thing I need, <laughs> but I know awesome. a lot of people who love them. <laughs> Not much to do about them, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> yes. Um, let's see. Sarah mentioned getting your kids involved with the toys. Do you have any specific recommendations for kids with toys? Um, are their puppies five months, and we have kids ranging from the age of two to nine. I do actually. So when you're giving your toys, make your dog work for it. Don't just give it to them, make them sit, make them stay, make them give you a paw. That's something that will help reinforce the training aspect of your dog. And that's something that kids can kind of get involved with. I would teach your kids not to like stick their hand right in the dog's mouth to get a toy out, especially not without talking to a dog trainer first about it. Um, but there are ways like uh, with that video of the tornado twister, you know, that you showed with your cousin, the kids were involved. They were showing the dog how to spin it. They were, very excited to work with their dog and show them how to work with it. Um, you know, kids are a lot of times they're not often part of the toy selection process or they're not often part of the, you know, enrichment process. Start showing them how to help enrich the dog's life. And before you know it, you'll have a bunch of like little trainers in your house. <laughs> I always love um, telling the kids to pick a trick that they want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and that will focus a little bit of time each time on mastering that particular trick. But the kids love doing it. So they love me coming back out and seeing how far they got with the trick or a new trick. And um, so I find having your dog do tricks with them is with the kids keeps them super involved and having so much fun with it all. Uh, how long should we expect our dogs to be entertained when we set them up with an enriching toy. What is a good goal to have for how long they should be busy? That is going to depend a lot on the dog. As much as I'd like, unfortunately, when we're talking dog toys and shoes and enrichment and keeping your dogs occupied, there's really no like hard rules or 
time limits, basically. Um, I would say a good enriching toy, one that would last you a couple hours. But that's not to say that that's not like your your tornado spinner that makes them think that might not last you more than 30 minutes, but it is something that got their brain working. So what's more important is really getting that brain working and getting that mental stimulation going. Um, but your Kong toys, I've gotten several hours out of those before. Um, you know, your Westfall toys like like this guy, I'll get a couple hours out of that as well. Um these guys, like this guy, with my girl, and she's she's a pit mix who's pretty pretty chewy. Um, that'll get maybe half hour out of. So it depends on the dog too and how they interact with it, how quickly they catch on, how quickly they can figure out how to get that stuff out of there. Yeah, and again, it goes back to like, what's your goal? I mean, keep in mind that um, match the toy with the goal. My dogs have specific toys for when I want them to chill out. And then they have toys that they can really play with. Both both of them, they're using their mind with them, but it's just in different ways and producing a different effect. So, and I would even throw in there, if you guys are thinking about a toy and you're not 100% sure on if you want to buy it, put it in the group chat. Just ask, has anybody used this? I guarantee you that there are, we have a pretty decent amount of customers that come in that are in the main, that are in this community. So, Put it out there. Just ask, hey, I saw that video. Sarah was talking about this, and I'm using this one a lot because it's right on hand. Um, has anybody used it? What was your experience on it? This is a great group for a wealth of information. On that. Yeah, please share any of your uh, toys that we haven't mentioned that you guys love. Please share them in the comments. Um, it's helpful for all of us to share and know that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a dog that chews her bed apart when we aren't home. Any toy we could give her or that you would recommend for a dog like that? My worry would be, well, I would stay away from anything plushy because she's going to do the same thing to the plushy toys that she did to the bed. <laughs> um, a Kong. I know we keep saying Kong over and over and over again. I promise they're not sponsoring this in any way, shape, or form. I get no kickbacks from them. <laughs> um, they just make a really good toy. So a Kong or a Westfall toy or one of those hard rubber toys that they can really kind of go to town on would be my suggestion. But one and of them with like it, need, a bit, them in need, need a little bit more information. You know, um, is it a small dog? Is it a big dog? Um, what other than your bed, do they actually like to do? Um, are they chewing everything else in the house? But again, the go-to is the Kong. Yeah. Um, watch the Kong video that was posted in the comments. Again, I kind of go through everything you can put in a Kong from Cheerios to vegetables, fruits, baby food. Um, so it's all in there um, and it's very helpful in stuffing it. Most of the stuff you have at home anyway, or at least I did. <laughs> a lot of people do. And you guys don't always necessarily realize that you have something that can be used for Kong stuffing. You know, how many of us have green beans sitting in our fridge that kind of sit in the back until they go bad? <laughs> you know, start using those things. Start using that those fruits and vegetables and, and start really enriching your dog's life a little bit. Well, that's what last night when I was doing it, I used the leftover chicken from our dinner so i could put that in and stuff it for the next day so we just have it it's there um but it's very helpful um would be inside the dog care bed i'm not sure what that is meaning i think it's going back to the other post but i'm not sure what that is so uh we'll move on sarah can we get your email address sure it's uh s davidson at concordpetfoods.com and just to share, Sarah's out of the Fraser office. Um, yeah, so that's my store. <laughs> yeah, go to the Fraser Concord Pet, and that's my only one I will go to now. A lot um, of us do carry some of the similar toys. I know I have all the stuff you've seen here at my location. The other ones might have it or might not. The best thing to do is to call your Concord that's near you if you're interested in going to one that's other than mine. And just. Uh, see yeah, the other thing I just want to share is if you have any questions on your dog's food, um, I think it's amazing. Most people are like, I should talk to my vet. But, and sorry to my vet friends out here, but um, they will even admit they are not educated in food um, as much. 
They, so they typically will name a couple different brands. Um, but Sarah, there's, there is pet nutritionalists, just like there is dietitians for humans, there's pet nutritionalists. Um, and I've actually talked with a vet who's an oncology doctor and she was like, you know, if someone asked me for your diet while your dog's on cancer, I wouldn't even know what to tell them. And um, so there's people you can ask though. Sarah may not be a nutritionalist, but she is one of the most um, knowledgeable people on nutrition around um, and other products. CBD, uh, this is also one of the people I recommend you talking to. So she has full knowledge of a whole array of pet products. So if you have any questions, please reach out to her. Thank you. I am not a nutritionist. I'm not a vet. I can help gear you in the right direction. I do recommend consulting with your veterinarian as well, though. If you have a dog who has a specific issue, your vet might be recommending a product for a specific reason. So I would talk to them about that. And it should just be an open conversation, you know, just say, hey, I talked talk to the girl at the pet store. She recommended X, Y, Z. What do you think? And see what the vet comes back at you with. Um, you know, the nutrition is, it's a tricky thing because dogs are all very, very different. Cats too. Um, so you definitely want to just make sure you know kind of what you're doing. Make sure that the food has safety regulations. Make sure that it is tested. Make sure that it is a veterinarian who created the formula. Um, make sure it has an AFCO seal on it that it is approved. Um, but if you do have questions about foods that might work for a situation that you're in, call me. Perfect. So we're going to, we have posted Sarah's contact information in the comments now. Um, Sarah, I want to thank you so much for coming on and helping tonight. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No, we were so excited. Uh, love talking to you on that type of stuff. And remember next week, Sarah Weber, um, Furry Elite Canine, and, and um, Amy Beth Clark uh, with Animal Ricky. So that will be actually our final in this series, which I'm kind of excited about. But <laughs> thank great. you all. <laughs> Have a great night and um, appreciate all of you joining. Thank you. Thanks for joining me, guys. And thank you, Kelly. No problem. Have a good one. Bye bye.